Welcome back to the workshop, or I guess I should say welcome back to the house, because this is a house solar project. So in the previous episode I made this custom cooling system to keep the inverter cool because I was going to mount it in this cabinet, and then I bought this 19 inch rack, but I wasn't happy with the shelving, so I custom made my own 3mm angle plate and then welded them up. And then there they are, with a little bit of felt on top, just to give them some protection. So we're ready to start the installation, let's get going. So it started with the scaffolding, so that arrived and uh, they spent a good day putting that up, but there was a lot to do, but it looked really good in the end. And if you're wondering how they put such an amount of scaffolding up in such a short time, I have the secret. And the secret is this red ball. Who knew? So a few days later, a couple of vans arrived with all the bits and pieces in. So the solar panels are quite big, they're in one van. And then things like this, the batteries are in another. Uh, this is the My Energy Eddy system, which is the diverter for the hot water system. So that uses uh, the immersion heater to heat that with any spare solar. Uh, this is the 20 amp isolator that goes after the inverter if you want to shut that down and isolate it. And then of course the solar panels themselves. Uh, quite amazing really, here's a little close up view of all the magic. So they went home after that day, so I thought i will give you a little summary of where we got to. Okay, so it's the end of the first day. I thought I'd give you an update on where we got to. So they got the six panels on the east roof and then the 12 panels on the west roof. So that all went okay. Um, they got some of the conduit uh, dropped down the side of the gable end. So that was okay. And then one of the two boxes outside near the DNO unit, the, so the meter where the electricity comes into the house. They got one box in there, one to go, and they know where that conduit route's gonna go. They got that figured out. Uh, they had a look at the eddy, where that's going to go, so that's pretty straightforward, so one in, one out job. They take the existing um, electrical heater in there, the immersion heater, and then just drop the eddy in, so it should be a sort of straight swap, basically. Uh, we've also, as you can see here, got the battery management system in and all wired up, that's the box at the top, and then we've got the three uh, battery systems at the bottom there, we've got room for a fourth one at the bottom. They all went in, it was a little bit fiddly, trying to get the shelves all lined up and getting, as you can imagine, I was trying to get the gaps looking even, we probably spent me and the installer he called me over because he's quite heavy um you know the other two were up on the roof so uh together we managed to get them in and yeah i'm pretty happy i did get my caliper out at one point just to check the gap but it looks good so you know we're gonna go with that it looks great happy with that um and then the other thing we've got done is the switch gear so they managed to get this switch gear on the wall here. So the one on the left, that's the generation meter. It shows you what you're generating. Um, more relates to if you have a feed-in tariff. So I don't think that's applicable to us, but uh, they tend to fit one anyway. Maybe there's a legal reason to have them as well. I'm not quite sure, but that's gone in. And then the AC isolator over there that um, disconnects the AC side, either feed-in or out to the inverter so you can isolate it. So those have gone in and the holes have gone through the wall and they've got some of the conduit going up the side of the house because it's got to go over through the loft to the to the other side. So the not so good stuff then, so here's the battery management system and in its little rack, and you'll see it's up on bricks. Now the reason is, um, I did, so we did lay it down on its back, got all the shelves uh, aligned, and then put it upright, and then put all the batteries in, and there was a bit of fiddling about, as I said earlier, just to get it just so happy with that. And then it basically had to roll back a little bit, probably yeah, about that far, just to get it tucked into this final place. And as soon as it tried to go up, the little bit of cardboard that was there like that, and if you can see, but that wheel has bent, and the other side as well. So, I mean, this is a lightweight studio rack. It's not meant to have 130 kilos in it, but I thought if we're only just gonna move it a little bit and then it's in place and, and done, but it's just, it's bent it. So emergency, because obviously they're here, and they're, now luckily, um, they're going to come back in two days time because it's got issues trying to get the inverter and there's other logistics which is great because it gives me a bit of a chance but i've got to get this good because obviously they want to be fitting this and then get out of here so i'm in an hour and i thought i could make a kind of steel angle iron and get some really heavy duty wheels and then machine some bosses and thread them and screw the wheels into that and then i can get it level and whatnot whatnot and i thought am i making this too complicated it's not going to get wheeled around so what i decided to do is this so to sort this little problem out, I've just spent the last couple of hours making this kind of base frame. And the idea is that we'd just kind of slide it onto there and it would sit on those two bearers. Uh, I'll paint this white, obviously screw it to the skirting board so it would sit back there. <sighs> obviously I'll paint it white and I'll sort of fix it to the floor so it didn't move. But the problem with this, well there's a couple of problems. One is 
and the floor's not very level so you can see it it rocks I mean it's reasonably flat I made it on a flat surface and um, yeah so I could make some legs but they'd only go into this this thin it's only 18 millimeter wood just under there so a little foot under there and there and it's going to take 130 kilos on that piece of wood so I've abandoned this and I'm making this so I've just got a little bit of the um, offcuts of the angle iron that I used to make the battery frame so uh, it's 50 by 50 angle iron there, had about a 25 mil box down here, added at the front and rear and then these cutouts here are because um, there's some box section that goes underneath uh, the battery frame if you like so I need to cut those away um, and then it will basically drop and sit into here and sit on these bits here and then this will stop it coming off the front or going off the back so I kind of uh, tack weld it together, I haven't welded on the inside because it's going to get very close to there and I didn't want to have to you know, weld out and sand sort of Linish that away really, so we'll just tidy that up. I've just got it tacked in position. The only thing I've got to do now is just take out a hole there and a bit more of a cutout around there because, uh, you know, it's just one of those growing stories, isn't it? You try and fix one problem, you walk into the next. Um, so, because I've allowed for in the future uh, to add a door, I've got some rivets on there and I need to make some clearance on the underside so that it will sit flat, otherwise, it'll sit on the top of the rivets and it'll be wobbling. Also, it still gives me access to the threads, so I'll show you those. So the unit comes with these access holes here, and it allows you to bolt the top to the sides. It comes as kind of a kit, and you can just put it together, and then they give you these plastic caps that just cover those over. But I decided not to put them in here, and then these are some rivets. I think they're M10, can't quite remember, and they were a perfect fit in the hole. So they've been riveted in there, and then I've got one that side, just in case I want to do something with like a magnetic catch or something. This is basically related to the opportunity to put a door on in the future uh, but I needed to wait till the wiring was in just to see how far out it would come because I knew that these these MC4s they don't come in elbows I did ask they didn't come straight so they've come out a fair way as you can see there so we'll have a look at that in the future I just want to keep the worst of the dust off but still allow ventilation anyway so I've got my rivets here and then I've got two on the underside oh, yeah so one there and one there and they stick down in the same way let these stick up. So yeah, I've got to allow clearance for those as well. And I'm on my own now. The guys have gone home. They'll be back on Monday, and I can't lift this. So I can't try it in the frame. So I'm just kind of measuring and seeing what I've yeah see how it's going to go. Make sure I've got plenty of clearance, and hopefully on the day they do come back, they can just drop this in the frame. Then I can wheel it in and out. So. You know, you can imagine if that's on that plinth there, you're never going to be able to move it really. You're going to need three people really, or you're going to have to sort of dismantle all this if you ever want to move it. Also, it came up above the board. That was deliberate to kind of hide the wires, but that means if you want to do any maintenance behind here, say if the CT cable goes or, you know, you want to add a network cable in the future, anything like that, it can be really awkward. You won't be able to open the door at all. So uh, I'm going to put it on wheels using that frame I'm making and then the other thing I've decided to do is I'm actually going to, if I do here, I'm actually going to cut it about there all the way across. So you still got the inverter, this will still open because the hinge starts yeah about there. So I'll cut it across there. This will stay fixed. So it'll be screwed in there, screwed the other side, this will be fixed. And then I'm going to make it so the, um, yeah, so then the battery tower if you like uh, will come up to here as it does now because I haven't got any room to go any lower because the wheels plus the tower is, you know there's, there's nowhere I can go any lower it'll be here but this won't move this will stay where it is the wires will still go behind it look nice and neat and then this bit will swing open from here which means I've got to dismantle all this uh, and cut that and then just permanently mount this and then this bit will open it'll make sense I'm sure in the future anyway so let me stop waffling and get on with it So I think that's the basic frame finished. So we've got the two notches cut out for the cross members that go across underneath the unit that the wheels went into. 
So I've got one at the front, one at the back, and then there's the two holes, which give relief for the rivnet heads that will allow me to put a, a door or some kind of hinge mechanism in the future. So looking good. So next thing to do is uh, get the legs mounted. So I turned up four bosses in the lathe and drilled the centre out. I think it's to M12. A nice little sham front to make them look nice. Maybe I don't see the tap thread going all the way through. And all I had to do was weld them on. And they need to go in the corners. Now I've got to be a little bit careful where they go uh, because the size of the wheel, the bit that it spins on on the bearing, might get too close to that box section. So let me bring one over and show you. So the wheels actually look quite good. So there's one unbraked one that's a caster, and then the other caster at the front. It's similar, but it's got a break on it. Uh, it's got that pack of six mil, or maybe seven, I can't quite remember, because the floor's uneven, so this brings the whole thing level again. So here's the four threaded bosses. So I think they're threaded uh, M12, 1.75. Then I've got the chamfer on the lower end. Just make them look a bit nicer, really. And then just taking the edge off there. So they will go, well, basically they can go anywhere in the corner. They're taking the load. The load will come down here, basically, and it, I don't think it'll touch the front. Uh, no, because it won't, it'll just be on these pieces. So I need to get as close to that as possible, but not too close to this, because this is where the box section is, and you'll see the wheel's actually quite big. I added that to split washer just so they didn't come undone in the future. You get the idea that, so although that's, that's 25, this base piece is about it's maybe 49, probably 50 actually. Get some calipers on to check, but basically what it means is I've got to get these set. So not too close to the edge, so that'll be annoying if you're up against the wall and it's trying to spin that round. Um, but then that bit there has got to clear the box section. So. It does fit, I've had a look, but I just need to get them reasonably accurate. Then we'll tack those on, all four places, and we're happy, weld them. Then we've got our wheels, take it all apart, paint it. So, see you in a bit. Okay, so here it is, all uh, welded up and sprayed. I'm just ready to have the wheels put on. So I think I've got these the right around. These have got, I think they were, end up being seven millimeter packers on that side. That's because the workshop slopes down and that brings it up to level. So we'll get those screwed in and check the levels and see if it's about right. And if it's ready, uh, then when they come back, I think uh, come back tomorrow, we can lift the whole battery assembly in the frame and drop it into here and hopefully that'll be that. As you can see, the floor's pretty bumpy so it depends exactly where it sits but we'll take it there. It's in the bubble. I think I could fill around with it, but the final place might mean it ends up moving ever so slightly anyway, because I don't know exactly where it's going to sit. Depends on uh, how far back it ends up going there. So I think we'll call that good. Hopefully it fits. We'll find out, won't we? But as you can see, that is not an inverter. I mean, it kind of looks a bit like one in terms of silhouette, but it's not the inverter. So essentially what happened was, um, they were about to open it out of the box and went, hang on a minute, this is a 3.6 kilowatt inverter. Um, so they phoned back at base and said, is this right? Uh, luckily I was around at the time and said, 
no, we ordered a five and I got the paperwork out and they went, yeah, sure enough, there it is. We ordered the five and the check back, back at base. So yeah, 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 it should have been a five. So long story short, um, they didn't have any fives in stock. It's quite a journey. I think it's about a two hour journey to come down here. So it's going to take them a little while just to get the new ones in and then bring them down to be maybe a day or two before they do that. Um, now there is some good news here. Uh, they didn't, they couldn't get hold of a five or whatever the reason was. So we're going to go for a six kilowatt inverter, no extra cost. So I have no issue with that because I, I, I wasn't too sure. But when I ran the numbers, I thought on a really bright, really sunny day, which we do get occasionally in the UK, uh, the inverter at five kilowatts might just start to clip. And the the answer to that is to you know jump up the next level. And at that point, I think it was a seven and a half kilowatt one, which you know, a lot more money. Uh, I don't know if it's the same size or whether you go up a family, but anyway. Uh, so, you know, the the spec was to go at five, and then that one or two percent of the year it might clip. Uh, you know, if you're trying to generate more than that, um, and then all it does is it just wastes it as heat because it, it can't make use of that. So going up to the six gives us that little bit of overhead. So yeah, no problem. And um, in the manual, it was exactly the same size. Basically, just got some upgraded electronics in it, I guess. So that's what we want. So while that's waiting to come through, um, I knocked up this template and drew out the sort of the ins and outs of all the different bits, just so that they could then see uh, where the AC isolate and all the switch gear is going to go effectively and work out their routing, just to make sure we've got plenty of clearance. So they're able to make progress on that. We're having a bit of a laugh about it. You know, these things happen. It's, it's fine. We're, we're getting there. Good news is we're going to get a six kilowatt instead of a five. So, so there is that. So also up there, I put that double socket in and a little bit of conduit and some cable tray and then the cable tie. So all they've got to do is run a little cable twin and earth from there down there. And then the other one there, that's to fit the Harvey system. So it's got sort of two little holes at the back. So it'll clip onto those screws and then they'll run a CT uh, terminal down there that will measure the AC output of this. So we'll know uh, between solar and battery what the combined generation is, or on those rare occasions if you're charging from the grid, which we yeah, we don't want to do, but that would go negative. It, it would show you that. But basically it will show you your total generation, which I think is a start. And then because that's running off a CT clamp that's not permanently live, you know, if there's no current flowing, which might happen, um, this will switch off and then it will reboot when the current goes. I didn't really want all that sort of messing around with it. Um, so I've got a nine volt supply that plugs in there and then that will go into CT3. So CT2 will be the sensor, CT3 will be the permanent power for this. It will always be on then, you know, no, no issues with it kind of um, to reboot and so on. So I think that's it for this episode, or that's uh, all I can take anyway. So uh, tune in next time and we'll see how the actual install goes. Um, we've got the 12 panels up on the west roof, we've got the six on the east. Uh, so we just need to get all those wired in. They've got uh, some of the conduits already done. Uh, but there's still lots to do. There's a changeover switch to do. Uh, there's Eddie still to do. Uh, so I look forward to see uh, how the guys get on tomorrow and probably the next day as well. So there's maybe another two days. It's turning into quite a big job, but that's okay by me. As long as you know, we get it, we get there in the end, we get what we want, then that then that's fine. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're enjoying this, uh, feel free to subscribe and see how we get on. I'm certainly looking forward to see how we get on. And with that, we'll see you next time.